Have you ever wondered how far into a Toho game you could get without moving from your starting position? Well, I did. And seeing as you clicked this video, then you probably do too. So let's get right to the point. Can you actually beat a Toho game without manually moving at all? Now I'm only going through the mainline games. That's Toho 1 to 18. Every game is going to be played on easy mode, duh, with the highest resource amount allowed. Continues are fine too, no replay needed. That's pretty much it. So here we go. Leading is highly responsive to prayers. Not a shmup, but still mainline. Since Rainbow can't move, I can only do two things, shoot and swing. On easy mode, the only way to lose a life on a stage is to get hit by the orb or the timeout bullet shower. Bombs work wonders for stages, but you only start with one. And the only consistent way you're getting more is by getting hit. It started off better than I expected, really. The orb can hit most spots, but it really struggles to hit the top corners and the opposite of Reimu. Ah, well, that wasn't gonna last. The first boss cycles between shooting and a tackle, which means Reimu is getting crushed straight into a continue. If you're wondering, bombs do damage bosses, but only if you're on your last life. This game has infinite continues, so as long as you can defeat a boss with six lives and seven bombs, you'll be fine. So I went the hell route because I thought the bosses would be easier. Nemo wasn't much of a hassle, but Kikuri certainly was. So you see this absolutely massive unit? Yeah, the hitbox is her forehead, in the spot I said that was difficult to hit. You need a pretty specific shot to force the orb to go straight up, on top of her bullets eating your talismans. Thank god for bombs, seriously. The final boss, Kongura, has one attack that lingers on you for two lives, but a bit of luck and bomb spam does actually get you through it. So there you go. You can in fact finish highly responsive to prayers without moving. You could probably do the same on the Makai route, but that's not my problem to solve. Off to a great start I'd say, but this game is a bit of an oddball to begin with, so who knows how long that'll last. Oh wait, I know. Next is Story of Eastern Wonderland. Shmup time. Here's the important bits to note. Three continues. Can start with five lives and three bombs per life, and going down to your last life grants an additional two bombs to your set starting amount. Now for the shot type, I went with the high power one, since the range is going to suck no matter what, as power is required to even gain each shot type specific abilities. Well, as you could expect, holding shoot and pressing bomb doesn't make for a very thrilling experience. So here's the general idea of what happened. You can't see your hitbox here, and there's no death bomb option, so you better be quick. You end up playing a game of chicken a lot, with losing a life being way more costly than using a bomb that could have been saved. The game has a decent amount of variance to boss patterns. You might get away with one bomb, or need like five. Hell, the third boss can't even be hit without multiple bombs. Oh yeah, so mid-bosses tend to drop either a bomb or life, but most of them like to move. So if you don't kill them directly in front of you, you're losing a valuable resource. And you have very little control over this. I like to think my luck was decent. And while I lost about six or so bombs, I did get to the final stage before losing all my continues. You can definitely reach Mima under these conditions, but I'm unsure if you could take her out. Now I know what you're thinking. Wow, Dylan, not very thorough there, huh? Well, you're right, but most of the possible improvement here is just having better luck. And if I could do that on command, believe me, I would. To be perfectly honest, I don't even want to play this game when I can move. And while I did try a few more times, it quickly turned into a moment where I almost scrapped the entire project. If you're absolutely sure you'll lose sleep over this, then give it a shot yourself. As for me though, just knowing that you can reach Mima is good enough. Next is Phantasmagoria of Dim Dream. You get three lives, two bombs per match, and three continues. These cannot be changed. There's a lot of characters to choose from, so I just went with Reimu. I figured she'd be fine. Phantasmagoria of Dim Dream works like so. You face nine fights, the first six are randomized, the seventh is predetermined based on your chosen character, and eight and nine are set regardless. This game is actually one of the reasons I specified manually moving. As in the Phantasmagoria games, getting hit by something forces you to move in a random direction, which can really mess things up. Bombs are nothing more than a screen clear as well. Now it sounds pretty rough, but to win this game, you just have to outlast your opponent, which on easy mode turned out to be pretty easy, as I got all the way to round 7 without losing a life. Well, I ate my words right away, as Mima ate through all of my continues. By the time she went down, I only had three lives left. Shortly after Chiuri took two of them, before letting me go to Yumeimi on my last life. And by nothing more than sheer dumb luck, I won. That makes another game you can beat without willfully moving, even though it took every last life I had. I wonder if with extremely good luck you could 1cc this, but I don't know how rank really affects this game. Maybe another character would have a better time. 
Either way, confirming Rainbow could do it with continues was good enough for me. Next is Lotus Land Story. Resources are the same as Story of Eastern Wonderland, minus the extra bombs on the final life. Shot type matters a bit more here with characters, so the choice really was between homing and raw power. Homing can potentially stop enemies before they shoot, but the damage is low, while raw power lacks the range, but has either a strong bomb, a long-lasting bomb, or both. Also at this point, using a continue will cause full power items to shoot out of you, so you can actually play with high power. I decided to go with Reimu homing, and things went well enough, all things considered, until I got to Kudami at the end of stage 6, and had the game crash. So I tried again, and it crashed during the fight again. This time I tried on a different PC-98 computer, and it was the same deal. So this time I tried Marissa, and it continued to crash at the boss fight. Finally, I just tried playing the game normally, and it didn't crash. I had no idea what caused it, so I asked somebody who I thought might. Turns out, the game just crashes if your rank is too low during the stage 2 boss fight in easy mode. Here I thought I went and discovered something new, but it's better that it was known about so I could explain what caused it. I may not be the guy who discovered it, but I'm likely the first idiot to have it happen to them in real gameplay. So there's that, I guess. So the game is impossible to beat, given this setback. But just for the hell of it, I played through the first two stages like normal, and continued the no-move part at the start of stage 3. Even with an extra continue at this point, it didn't help at all. Ellie's floor tiles and scythe throwing was too much, and bombs kind of suck a lot damage-wise. Even with that additional continue, and only 5 stages total, I wiped out shortly after the first double spark. So that one was a complete no-go regardless of the crash, but it was neat to see how the rest would go. You'd think with 5 stages it would be one of the more likely games, but Story of Eastern Wonderland was the same, and look how that turned out. Oh well, maybe the next one will go better. Next is Mystic Square. Pretty much the same deal resource-wise, and I went with Reimu once more. I wish I had more to say about this one, but it kinda just went without anything major. I did make it to stage 3 before I continue, so there's that. Everything after that just kinda fell apart. Mai and Yuki are more or less two bosses in one, and Yumeko has quite a few aim patterns, which means bomb span until someone dies. Spoiler alert, that was me. I didn't lose much in the way of bombs, and I guess my luck was okay, but I still wiped out midway into Yumeko. I don't think it's even possible to reach stage 6, but I did only try Reimu. I don't know how much difference bomb damage is for characters, but unless it's fairly significant, I don't see my conclusion changing. Next is Embodiment of Scarlet Devil. 5 lives, 3 bombs per life, and 3 continues, with only 5 stages. I went with Reimu A, aka Homing, to take things out before they fired. Yeah, you kinda need power for that. I never realized how many enemies in this game fire directly at the player until I did this. Hell, Rumi is all about it, and it only takes one bullet to fire off to force a bomb or a death. Speaking of those, bombs now have some real variety in damage and duration. Fantasy Seal isn't exactly what I'd call bad, but with it, Reimu was only able to reach Patchouli at the end of Stage 4. I'm not done though, as Marissa B has the real big badass nasty bomb that lasts forever and does a lot of damage. In a decent amount of places, Master Spark was as effective as two Fantasy Seals. And with it, I was able to make it all the way to Sakuya's second non-spell. Now the real question is, can you beat her? There were four attacks left, so I need at least four more bombs. You aren't getting an extra life through score, and the only resource drop that is consistent is Stage 3's 1-up from Mailing. Even with a good number of aim shots throughout, it is still EOSD, so there's just as much RNG to bullet and boss movement. I've already spent way too long on this game's easy mode on another challenge. And much like PC-98, I don't want to play the game of sit and watch and hope for exceptionally good luck. Still, it got really close, so I can't completely dismiss it as impossible. But I don't think I could take playing all the way to the stage 5 mid-boss just to pray for the life to fall on me, on top of all the other stuff in the earlier stages that would need to go just as well. Next is Perfect Cherry Blossom. 5 lives, and bomb count is tied to character. This game also gives the player 5 continues. This time I went with Sakuya A, as she starts with 4 bombs per life, and while her bomb isn't really that strong, it sticks around. She also comes with the added benefit of homing. Extra lives are now tied to point items, which get suctioned in by bombs and borders, so you can actually get 1 or 2 per continue. The amount required also resets each time. Borders sound like they'd be incredibly handy here, but you don't actually get that many that really make a difference. It wasn't too different from normal for the first half, and stage 4 was just a mess. So many things are aimed at you in this stage, 
and Sakuya has to deal with at least two of Merlin's knots, which are all aimed too. I don't trust lasers, so I was mashing. I thought five continues was more than enough, but it didn't get much better afterwards. So for whatever reason, Sakuya A's homing doesn't work on some of Yomu's spell cards, like the ones where she moves left and right. Pitiful bomb damage combined with no shot damage, and yeah, it pretty much became an eight bomb timeout. Well, it got really dicey, but I did make it all the way to Yiko and slowly melted away my last continue. I actually almost choked as I lost a life with four bombs to a bullet that really should have disappeared since Yiko was busy exploding. Resurrection Butterfly has to be survived for a minute, which without good luck, wasn't going to work out with only four bombs. Fortunately for me, I scraped out an extra life through point items during it and successfully survived the spell card to finish the game. So there you go on that one. You can in fact beat Perfect Cherry Blossom without moving. I actually lost a number of bombs throughout the game, so it didn't have to be as close as it was. Also, since Sakuya finished it, I saw no reason to see how the other characters did. Well, I wasn't going to do that even if Sakuya didn't work out. Cool bug fact, I finished with 152 bombs used. I guess it's true what they say, pressing X really does win games. Next is Imperishable Knight. A whopping 7 lives to start, 3 bombs per life, and technically infinite continues. One of the main things about this game is with the death bombs, as they're more likely to activate a last spell using two bombs instead of one. I went with Border Team, as Rainbow's ability prevents contact damage to familiars and can use a last spell even with only one bomb. They also have a longer window to activate it. Imperishable Knight has infinite continues, with a catch. The game starts at 11 p.m. and when it hits 5 a.m., the game ends. Clearing a stage without the time bonus met fast forwards an hour and continues at 30 minutes. Basically what this means is you have one continue to get to stage six as you aren't hitting that time bonus ever. So how did it go? The border team got halfway through the race and fight before going over time. Even with the powered up fantasy seal as an option, it didn't change regular fantasy seals comparatively lacking power. So I also tried out the magician team. I figured three master sparks would outperform Reimu's now the interesting thing is these teams have different stage four bosses, and despite the magician team doing much better resource wise by this point, their fight was definitely worse. Reimu's spell cards aren't much of a hassle for Master Spark, but she has these really annoying nuns that position her on the edge of the laser, resulting in pitiful damage. Even with that, the magician team not only got to Raisin, but finished with a respectable amount of resources left. Unfortunately, it didn't matter, as a second continue had already been used. So that's as far as you can get. Effectively, a story of Eastern Wonderland, a Lotus Land story, or embodiment of Scarlet Devil easy mode here, you can finish five stages. I didn't bother trying the remaining characters, as the main issue was the second continue, and I severely doubt any of them could bring something that could outshine the Magician team by that much. Now, if this was a standard three continues game, then I bet I could have finished it proper. But since that isn't the case, this one is another confident no. Next is Phantasmagoria of Flower View. Five lives, three continues, and nine rounds to go through. Much like Phantasmagoria of Dim Dream, I just went with Reimu. This time around, each character's fights are set, and you won't be fighting the entire cast. Another massive difference here compared to Phantasmagoria of Dim Dream is that using a level two or higher attack clears bullets around you, but you have no bombs. So what happened really was level two spam when needed until my opponent exploded. It went very well, up to Sakuya. Sakuya's special ability is a line of aimed knives at you. This happens fairly frequently, and the only way around it is a level 2 or higher charge. I died a lot, and I was actually thinking I should try Sakuya just to take her out of the rotation. But she did eventually fall, so I kept on. And immediately the next opponent is Aya, who presented the same problem as Sakuya, only faster. I died a lot again, and while I was debating trying her next time instead, she rolled over for me. Given how awful those matches ended up being, I expected the worst from Komachi and Eiki. Well, their abilities weren't nearly as damning to this challenge as the previous. And while I did continue to Pachoon, I eventually won out over both of them with a continued despair. Are you surprised at how many of these have succeeded so far? Sure, they aren't 1ccs, but even with continues, I kinda thought I'd be sitting on just highly responsive to prayers cleared. Regarding this one, given that you can start with 5 lives per continue, maybe a certain character's route could result in a 1cc. But I'm sure no matter which character you choose, he'll still need way more luck than Komachi has money. Next up is Mountain of Fat Chance. Next up is Subterranean, yeah right. Next up is Undefined A Different Game. Okay, 
So here's the thing about these games. Mountain of Faith marks the beginning of unchangeable starting resources. Meaning from here on out, you start with three lives, no matter what. All three feature a new continue system. You have infinite retries, but you have to start the stage over from the beginning with three lives. You are at least given max power, with the exception of restarting on stage one. Speaking of power, 10 and 11 use it in place of bombs. And since you start with zero power, you start with zero bombs. I tried all six shot types in Mountain of Faith, and getting past Shizuha was a miracle. Even then the game ended immediately after. That marks Mountain of Faith. Can't even get to the stage one boss. I did the same with Subterranean Animism. In this one, you get a full power item when shot down to your last life, so you get some bombs to work with. But it's not enough to finish the stage. Even the 8 power Marissa A can't do it. She can at least get to the boss, which is a step up from the last game, but once again the dream dies in the first stage. So what about UFO? UFO does have bombs again, which by the way have some of the weirdest looking bombs in the entirety of the series, but only a few shot types could even get past Nazarin. When restarting into stage 2, you do get full power, but that wasn't enough to even reach the boss. You did get to the mid boss at least. So yeah, all three of these games aren't happening due to the continue system, which was pretty obvious, but because I knew it was likely to be the case, I could try out every option without too much additional hassle. Next up is 10 Desires. Now you want to talk about boring? Here's boring. Three lives, two bombs per life, at least continues it back to normal, with three to burn through. All resources come from gathering spirits, which explode from enemies, so you'll never get them. The only trance you'll get is the bit you start with, and it will never refill. I tried all four characters, with Reimu and Marissa both getting to the stage 3 boss, and dying to the same spell card. I opted to not even finish with Sanai or Yomu, since there was no way they were going to do any better. Well, that's it. A bust. The only remotely interesting thing I can think of to say is that Yiko has been the closest I've gotten to beating a stage 1 boss without using a bomb. Which is a hell of a thing to say outside of the context of this challenge. Ah oh well, it still went better than the last three, so maybe it'll only get better from here. Next up is Double Dealing Character. The game now starts you with three bombs per life, but nothing else has changed. I started with Reimu A. Her focus shot looked pretty promising, but her bomb came up short. Literally. I can't reach high enough up the screen to damage the bosses. I never noticed using this bomb made Reimu move. She returns to her starting position at the end, but I thought it was neat. The first continue popped during Seki Banki, and I opted to just try another shot type. So now with Reimu B. The B stands for basic. I still used to continue on Bonky, but I had more faith in Fantasy Seal further in. By the way, this game's gimmick involves the point of collection line, but magneting through a bomb or even when a boss shows up or explodes also counts, so you can actually get some additional resources through it. So Reimu did pretty well, got all the way to Yatsuhashi Final in Stage 4, but didn't have the juice to get through. At this point I really should just start with Marissa, but whatever. Marissa Ace Flame does reach bosses, it has more range than I thought, but I'm here for the Master Spark. Well, in this game, it's the negative spark. It even affects the spell card cut-ins. This time, I got to Ben Ben Final in Stage 4. In other words, no actual difference. However, I did lose some bombs as Marissa, so it is certainly possible to reach Stage 5, but I don't see it getting much further than the title card. So Sakuya is also a character in this game, and I tried her out. Sakuya B, to be exact. Sakuya A bomb is a screen clear with a 10 second shield, but deals no damage. So I thought Sakuya B would have a better one. Well, turns out all this one does is convert on-screen bullets to point items. And also does zero damage. It's impressively bad. Like you really have to go out of your way to make a bomb this awful. Unsurprisingly, Sakuya burned a continue on the stage one boss. So there's no reason to go through any more of that. Well, it went better than the last game. Minus Sakuya, but still not nearly enough to finish it. I'm impressed at the number of resources I was able to get, but to be honest, I'm unsure how much they truly helped, especially since using the continue resets your stock. Oh well, maybe the next game will be better, right? Next is Legacy of Lunatic Kingdom. Same resource count as the last game, only now I have five continues to use, and this will be the case for all the remaining games. Lol K has two modes, and I'll be doing this in Legacy. Simply because in point device, if I run into an aimed bullet section without a bomb, that's GG. Once again, I started with Reimu. Getting resources requires grazing, which isn't happening. So aside from a few full bombs from mid-bosses, you're getting nothing. But hey, 
Five continues is a lot, or so I thought. The stages are long and aggressive, even on easy mode. Rainbow got to the end of stage three, losing to Dormi's final spell card. A whole stage behind the last game, despite two more continues available. Next up was Marissa, which didn't make that much of a difference this time. She did get past Dormi, but entered stage four with three bombs and nothing else. Now the star of the show, Sanai. Sanai's bomb has a good duration and is plenty strong. One of its quirks is that Sanai is able to graze bullets while it's active, so she's invincible and can cheese the requirements for resource pieces. That doesn't really work here though, as the source of the explosion destroys bullets, and Sanai is behind it. Well, even lacking that ability, this bomb was a huge step up from Master Spark. No joke. Sanai not only got to stage four, but had a whole continue to spare. I played a game of, will those lasers kill me? And managed to get all the way to the boss. Unfortunately, Sagume ended at the start of the first spell card, but it was quite a jump in progress over the other two. Then there's Raisin, who I didn't bother using. Raisin's bomb isn't used for damage. It instead gives her three additional hits, but the invincibility between each hit is small, so a laser can still shred you. I figure the lack of damage, combined with being unable to shoot things down, means I was just going to wipe at stage three again, but I'd have to hear three times the amount of Pachoon. So I saw no Raisin to subject the bunny to that. I had no faith Lol K was going to be doable, but I'm pleasantly surprised at how well it actually went. I don't have much to say about it though, other than the stages are long and revenge bullets are painful. One thing I can say though, is that Reimu shooting down the first set of fairies does make for a nice beat. Next is Hidden Star and Four Seasons. So this game effectively has 16 shot types in it. So instead of starting at Reimu, I looked into who had the strongest bomb and what season would be the most practical for what I'm doing. That led me to the combination of Aya with the summer subseason. Aya's bomb is strong and long lasting. Its AOE is the weakest though. Cherno was also an option, but I figured Aya's shot would be better overall when combined with the bomb. The summer subseason was chosen because it only needs one bar per use and activates a small safety zone to use when you run out of bombs. Only thing about this though is that the duration is short. It has a cooldown and you don't have invincibility during it. There were a few times I tried to use it in place of a bomb but got hit afterwards, resulting in a bigger waste. This game goes back to score based extra lives. However, when using a continue, the required point amount doesn't reset. Ten Desires does this too with its life piece requirements and I have no idea why. Well anyways, some resources were gained, and I got to stage 6, all the way to Okina's third non before going down to the last continue. I managed to push all the way to the final with one life and four bombs left, and then I remembered something important. Okina has a bomb shield. The absolute heartbreaker right at the end. No season, base shot, damageless bombs, and over a 99 second timer. Using everything I had left, I survived to the 66 second mark. A far cry from finishing. What a way for that to end, huh? Now I did lose at least three bombs throughout, but I don't think that alone could get me through another minute. Same deal with picking Cherno, or even another sub-season. Even if it did make certain things better, I can't imagine it'll fix the main issue in the final. Maybe if you're insanely lucky for the whole thing you could win, but I'm not trying that. A true shame, but that's just the way the Tengu tumbles. Next is Wily Beast and Weakest Creature. Marissa with Otter Spirit. Duh. Otter makes the bombs silly and starts each life with an extra, meaning four bombs per life. Now here's the thing. Animal spirits bounce around the screen like UFOs. I forgot to mention this, but UFOs weren't able to go low enough for the player to grab them. Here, however, with a pretty precise bounce, you will suck up a spirit. So here's what I did when I noticed this. I let the dialogue time out until I grabbed the spirits I wanted or they left the screen. It takes quite a while for them to leave and your bar won't decrease in text. Resource pieces grabbed with a full bar will instantly release for you to grab, and yes, this actually netted me a few extra resources throughout the game. Did it actually matter though? I can't say really. Otter Bomb is disgusting, and you get four per life. You really don't need the insurance of Roaring Mode. I got the stage six with an extra continue, two lives, and a bomb. And believe it or not, didn't use that continue the entire stage. I like that in the last game, Okina took the gimmick away from the player, but in this game, it's thrown into the player's face so hard that it's honestly a bit overbearing. I mean, even without moving, I was still able to create a bullet clearing shield. So that went well, finished with a whole extra continue to use. I was pretty confident in this one due to the otter's existence. It's nice to see that confidence wasn't misplaced. 
There are eight other Sha types in this game, but even if any of them could also clear the game, I severely doubt they could do it in only four continues. Last up is Unconnected Marketeers. Now the cool thing about this game is its card system, letting me start a run with a max of three. I figured loading up on bombs was the way to go, so I picked the character who had a good bomb and a good shot, that being Sanai. The cards in question are start with one extra bomb and obtain a bomb every stage, spawn a bomb every time you die, and stronger bombs. Basically, Otter Spirit as a card. Sanai's froggy bomb became a triple burst explosion, and it did a lot of damage. At the end of each stage, you're allowed to purchase a new card, and the selection is a bit random. The main card I was interested in was one that can't be started with, Moko's card, which grants an immediate three lives. It even showed up multiple times, but I never had enough money for it, so I settled for a single one-up. Well, my bomb focus loadout worked out pretty damn well, as I didn't end up using it continue until the stage four boss. A good chunk of the resource piece drops also come from enemies that don't move directly in your line of sight. Quite convenient. So as you could probably guess from that, four continues with only two stages left meant I could grossly overwhelm them, which I did. By the end of it, I did use four continues, but it was pretty close to being only three, making this one the least stressful experience by far. Since I succeeded on the first attempt, I didn't have to mess around with other combinations, but there's certainly other things you could try. They might even work out better. Hell, they might even work on a higher difficulty. That actually got me curious, so I ran the same setup on Lunatic. And believe it or not, I got all the way to Shimada's second last spell card. I guarantee if she didn't effectively have two timeout spells, it was going to be a done deal. But well, maybe with another combination, you could actually finish her off. But just getting that far is good enough for me. And that's it. And for those not paying attention, thanks for keeping the video open anyways. Out of the 18 mainline solo games, I was able to complete six of them. But that is more than I thought. Pretty much considered highly responsive to prayers to be the only one beatable. And like I said, playing Story of Eastern Wonderland like this was so awful that I wanted to quit the whole project. If I had to say anything overall, it was neat seeing how many things could be dodged without having to move. It was also some kind of hell watching a one-up fall just outside of your reach and not being allowed to grab it. For the most part though, it was pretty boring. I mean, when the challenge is to win without playing, that's expected. The most interesting games were the ones that I could still kind of use the main gimmick regardless, but that didn't happen too much. It really was just a lot of bombs over and over and over. Of course, since I didn't exactly run the same game multiple times, there's a possibility that some of the ones listed as incomplete could still be completable, but I simply don't have the desire to put any more time into this. I hope you enjoyed the time I did put in, and if this somehow inspires you to try some of these out yourself, then I'm sorry. If there's anything to take away from this video, it's that bombs are your friends, and you shouldn't be afraid to make use of them, especially if you're just trying to finish a game, 1cc or not. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you during the next incident.